Welcome to our presentation on design guidelines for propylene splitter efficiencies. KLM Technology Group, based in the USA since 1995. KLM is a technical consultancy group providing specialized training, services, and equipment to improve process plant oper operational efficiency, profitability, and safety. KLM's core businesses. We do training classes all over the world. We have the Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design. We have engineering software, process optimization studies, HAZOP facilitation, and engineering support. People ask me about the handbook. If you've searched anything on the web, you've found the Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design. Uh, we're very pleased uh, the response we've got from all over the world. Today we're talking about design guidelines for propylene splitter efficiency. So we're going to have an introduction, talk about general tray efficiency in general, issues that affect tower efficiency and capacity, best practices, and some conclusions. Actual field efficiencies are affected by many factors. When you run a simulation, typically you run a simulation at 100% efficiency, but when you go to the field, the trays are never going to be 100% efficient. Things that affect this would be the tire pressure, the geometry and the design of the contacting equipment, flow rates and flow paths of the liquid and vapor streams, composition and properties of the vapor and liquid streams. All of these items may affect tray efficiencies, and there are field examples that have greatly impacted tray efficiencies. This presentation will develop some case studies and develop some design best practices. There's data, and then there's folklore and myths. So you gotta, you gotta, whenever you're talking, make sure you go back to the data. So here's some general estimates of field tray efficiency. We published this data in a paper in 2005. Demethanizer, 65%. The propanizer, debutanizer. Low alpha K aromatics, high alpha K aromatics, air separation, hydrocarbon and water, 15%. Okay. This is these are estimates for typical cross-flowing trays and in SRK. Now there is a difference between SRK and Ping Robinson. And so most people are using Ping Robinson today because it's it's generally a little more accurate. But when you go back to compare data from 20 years ago, you have to run apples to apples. So you have to run, you have to look at the data from 20 years ago and compare it today to SRK. General tray efficiency. In this, in this table right here, there's something we can observe. If the boiling points are close together, the simulation says we need lots of trays. But when we go, when we go to the field, the tray efficiency is high, okay? And the converse is true. If the boiling points are far apart, the simulation says I don't need many stages, but when I go to the field, I have low efficiency. Like propane and propylene splitter, which we're talking about, um, this simulation might have 120 stages when I go to the field for a cross throwing flay, for a cross flowing tray with ping, uh, not with ping rods, with SRK, I might get 85% efficiency. But for benzene and water, which has a high separation boiling point, the simulation's going to tell me I might have five stages, but when I go to the field, I may only get 20% efficiency. It's important that you understand this. General tray efficiencies from 1958. O'Connell type equations can be used to predict and overall tray efficiency based upon viscosity and relative volatility. Relative volatility is the difference in the boiling points, which we just talked about. And it's to the minus 0.2. Okay, so this is from 1946. So this, this has been around a long time. And it can be used fairly effectively to estimate general tray efficiencies. And... Uh, Relative volatility of key components versus the vis uh, viscosity in the feed. And this is from uh, 1946. 
So as pressure goes up, the alpha Ks go down. As temperature goes up, viscosity goes down. So because this is to the negative, it uh, goes up and efficiency goes up. For a fixed system like a C3 splitter, efficiency might go up with the increase of operational pressure. This is true for many systems. So what is this effect in the field? So here are one, two, three, four, five cases that we talk, five different pressures that we talk about in the field. And again, this data is for cross-flowing trays and SRK. So at 250 pounds, O'Connell says they're 88% efficient, efficiency in the field. They're running from 75 to 85, and there's numerous patients numerous papers that document this all right about 150 pounds o'connell says it's 84 and uh, it might be 70 to 80 and this is a serb data and i was the uh, uh i was the uh, this was data that i observed about 100 pounds it o'connell says 81 and uh, it's about 65 to 70 and uh, i've got several good uh, references for this at 57 pounds a, there's a paper in AICHE that was published in 2000, 2011 it's about 66 percent about 50 pounds O'Connell says 75 and there's uh, observed data uh, from uh, some of my contributing authors here and again this is data for cross filling trays so as pressure goes up O'Connell says Efficiency goes up, and we've actually seen this in the field. The end result is what counts. Does the tower meet capacity and product purities? Each vendor utilizes a tune model that will give the proper end result. There are over 200 C3 splitters in operation. But O'Connell correlation works well for predicting the effect of the pressure on the efficiencies. Folklore and myth. Can proclaim lower pressure gives higher efficiencies. You need to review your data. It may not be true. So a lot of people believe that lower pressure gives higher efficiencies, but the data does not support that. This myth may have been developed from packing data, where the height of equivalent theoretical plate is higher at lower pressures. Okay, so it appears that the efficiency goes gets better at lower pressure with packing. The field data for trays confirms that this pressure goes up. This may not be the case for packing. And there are two ideas why this might be happening. So as pressure goes up, packing efficiency tend to, to go, tend to, tends to go down. The first idea, some studies have shown that at higher pressure, there appear to be more liquid holdup on the packing, creating a larger boundary layer, leading to lower efficiency. The second idea is there's a relationship between the vapor density and the liquid density and the packing efficiencies. At higher pressure, the densities become closer together, leading to a back-mixing effect of the liquid by the vapor, leading to lower efficiency. So you get a back-mixing effect. Types of trays. We've talked about pressure. Now let's look at the device. You've got cross-flowing trays. You've got multiple downcomer trays, you've got high efficiency trays, you've got random and structured packing. Trays are best for high pressure because of this the pressure effect. They're better for high flows, they might be better for fouling services. Packing is best for low pressure, below 150 pounds or about 10 bar, and they're better for lower flows. Tray efficiency. Oh, there's several types of tray efficiencies. Here's some equations. But there's two, two types we want to talk about. One is point efficiency, and the second is overall tray efficiency. All right. So point efficiency is where V1 meets L1. Okay, And that is point efficiency. For a cross-flowing tray, the liquid flows across the tray V1 meets L1. L1 then changes in composition and becomes L2. Then V1 meets L3. You're about 65% efficiency. So, so as you move across the tray, 
the composition in the liquid changes and you can get a higher overall efficiency. So what are some good practices in sieve tray designs? Okay, so publish, data published by FRI and F I AICHE in 2007. The best range of hole size is a half inch to one inch. The capacity of the sieve tray decreases as the hole size becomes larger. This loss in capacity is due to the higher entrainment. So the best choice might be about 12.7, uh, which is a, a one half inch. Okay. The efficiency of 8% of the open area of a sieve track is consistently higher than that of a 14 inch open area. So AIC, uh, FRI recommends a data range of 6 to 16. Typically, I try to uh, go 8 to 10. So there's two things I'm going to try to do. Uh, best practice in the sieve trays, I'm going to try to use a half inch hole size, and I'm going to try to use 8 to 10 open area. Vector path flow length across the trays. Moldable downcomer tray. A moldable downcomer tray has less path flow length and lower efficiency. Okay? So, one rule of, is to try to keep the path flow length above 450 millimeters, which is 18 inches, to maintain good efficiency. As the path flow length goes down, the efficiency goes down. So, here's a, a, an older picture of a... Of a in a uh, multiple downcomer tray. The question everybody asks is how much less efficient is a multiple downcomer tray? You can hear numbers from 2% to 20%. I had a multiple downcomer tray salesman tell me they were 2% difference. I had a cross flowing tray salesman tell me they were 20% difference. So, folklore and myth, what do you believe? Well, the good things, there's some published data. From August 92, there's a C2 splitter, which has published data of about 74. From June 95, there's a C3 splitter, which has published data of 74. Now, we would expect this 250-pound C3 splitter to have about an 85% efficiency. So a good guess would be maybe 10% less. Multiple downcomer trays, best practice. Understand there is a loss in tray efficiency. But because you can install them on 18-inch tray spacings or less, you can install more trays and possibly increase the overall tower efficiency based on the reflux to stages curve. So basically, even though you have maybe 10% less, you can install more trays and actually increase the tower efficiency. And the data said I could get a 25% capacity gain or a 35% capacity gain. But I have seen higher than 35%. If designed properly, there, there can be an efficiency and a capacity change, capacity increase. So multiple downcomers have a, have a, uh, have a place. They uh, can be used effectively if designed properly. Types of internals that have been used in propylene splitter columns are conventional cross flowing flays, dual flow ripple trays, structured packing, multiple downcomer trays, high efficiency and capacity trays. Conventional downcomer trays, we've already talked about them. They work very well, about 85% efficiency and high pressure propylene splitter service. Propylene splitters. Dual flow trays. Dual flow trays were installed in several propylene splitters. There are two challenges of dual flow tray. The point efficiency, all right, because the vapor and liquid go up and down, there's no cross flowing tray gain. The second challenge of a dual flow tray is maldistribution. Vapor Tim will travel up one side and the liquid will travel down the other. If you've ever been on the top of a tower in a windstorm, Believe it or not, the top of that tower will move two feet in either direction. Once it moves, the liquid will begin to travel down one side and the vapor will begin to travel up the other. Once this, inst once this instability starts, it's hard to stop it. Now what one vendor did to try to stop this instability 
the support beams for the tray, they put on top of the tray to, to make four, four quadrants for the, for, the, um, for the liquid. It did help some, but not enough. Okay, The actual field of tray efficiency was still about 42%. In a this is about a 150 175 pound, the vendor accounted for the lower efficiency by installing 248 trays, maybe you know maybe 30 more trays than you actually needed. Propylene splitters types of internals have been used. Structure packing, structure packing was installed in two high pressure propylene splitters with limited success. The packing was removed and the trays reinstalled. Multiple downcomer trays. There are many successful applications of multiple downcomer trays in propylene splitter service. Pro down, multiple downcomer trays are a good fit for propylene splitter service. High capacity trays. Many studies have shown high capacity trays can improve capacity up to 25% and efficiency 7 to 10. There's some published data propylene splitters of greater than 10% efficiency increases. I would go back and look at the data closely to make sure we're comparing SRK to SRK, not SRK to Ping Robinson. You're going to probably get some efficiency gain just from Ping Robinson. But there is a gain for high capacity trays. Low pressure versus high pressure splitters. There's a wide range of choices for propylene splitters, 50 pounds to 300 pounds. What might be the best guidelines to choose the best pressure? And you got folklore versus myths. You got a lot of people talking about a lot of different things. High pressure splitters, conventional high pressure splitters. Uh, there's a lot of them out there in ethylene plants. What are their advantages? They have the advantage to utilize cooling water for the overhead condenser. Ability to utilize medium level heat. All right. And there's a surplus of medium level heat in an olefin plant. So it's probably advantageous to use a high pressure C3 splitter in an olefin plant. Disadvantages might be capital cost. You're going to have a thicker tower shell and foundation. Okay. Low pressure splitters. Low pressure splitters will be low pressure. You'll use a compressor to, to pump up pump up, boost up the pressure so you can cool it with cooling water. The temperature rise in the compressor and you can use in the reboiler. Advantages. Capital costs. There's going to be a thinner shell and foundation. Energy. If there's not a surplus of medium level heat, the compressor heat can be utilized for the energy. You don't have to go build a steam reboiler. You don't have to go build certain things. Lower reflux ratio. The combination of the JT effect and the relative volatility, you could get a lower reflux ratio, fewer stages. Com again, the combination of the JT effect and the relative volatility. Disadvantages. You got the capital, the energy, and the maintenance cost of a compressor. And lower pressure, you're going to have a larger diameter shell. Many vendors will recommend different tire pressures. One vendor recommends 90 pounds. A second vendor might recommend 110 pounds. Uh, uh, some people might recommend 150. 150 pounds is the best. So you may need to study, you may need to look and run a study at capital cost versus pressure versus efficiency. Uh, do you, at low pressure splitters, you could actually use packing. So. Do you uh, use packing? Do I use trays? There's a whole range of things which might be the best for a low pressure splitter. So what have we talked about today? Field efficiency of tray tires may increase with operational pressure as shown in the O'Connell equation, correlation. Field efficiency of packed tires from the data appears to be going down with increasing operational pressure and proper design and selection of trays, packing, and tunnels are the critical for the success of distillation columns. Thanks for your time today. Have a great day.